I want to be the very best that no one ever was. In order to attain this goal, I need to surround myself with only the finest things in life. When it comes to Pokemon films, nothing beats the original. I have traveled across the land, searching far and wide, watching each Pokemon movie to understand the power that's inside. And that power resides within Pokemon the Movie 2000. So Brian gotta wear my shade. All right, Chris, you pick a choose to throw down with me, that's just fine. The pun counter is back, Pokemon edition. Let's feud. Just bringing up this original cast gets me all misty-eyed. So many fond memories of my heroes. My boy Brock is here bringing on the comic relief and his trademark sexual harassment. Classic Brock. He's nowhere to be found in the mediocre sequel. Then there's the always spunky Misty. Ash is of course the main star with his right hand rodent, Pikachu. One of the cutest creations ever conceived, right up there with Gizmo from Gremlins. Talking about Pikachu, not Ash. Although Ash is a striking child. That sounded really bad. Wow, you sure are Bulbasaur about that thing. But admittedly, I am too because Brock was my boy and they replaced him with something nasty. Something putrid. Something vile. Tracy. They had to do something to tone down the awesomeness so it wouldn't exceed the legal limit. You see, they got Misty back in full force. You got Ash's mom. Oh, hi, mom. You got both professors, Oak and Ivy. And then we got Team Rocket in an expanded role. The biggest draw to a Pokemon film are the Pokemon themselves, and the original has the classics. You can't beat them. I'm talking Charizard, I'm talking Squirtle, Venusaur, or is it Ivasaur? It's been a while since I've seen the movie, so I'm a little rusty when it comes to my Pokemon knowledge. The fact remains, nothing can top the originals. I don't know why I'm whispering like I have a smoker's lung. The showrunners come from the amazing Mewtwo and Mew. Legendary birds are fine and all, but cloned Pokemon hell-bent on world domination is just a tad cooler. Pokemon 2000 had a very similar draw. Those clone Pokemon are cool and everything, but the legendary birds engage in an all-out war to destroy each other. Have you ever seen birds go that hard? Have you? It was insane! Ash almost died and not by getting turned to stone again and saved by the power of love. The stakes were larger because our heroes were actually in real danger. Plus that mixing freaking Lugia? It wasn't just three birds, we had four. What did you have? A bunch of lame clones that punched each other slowly and it was emotional. Na, 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 na. Prepare for Troll Adam and make it double. This second film had twice the heart and twice the adventure as the first. Twice the heart? Ash is straight up murdered and then resurrected again by the tears of Pokemon. That's not just heart, that's the power of love, baby. It is the power of love, and it's one of the most cliched and contrived plot points in movie history. Whenever a movie uses the power of love, all you know is that the writers didn't know how to freaking end it. But in Pokemon 2000, they had to go in character development. They had to go all action-y. They had to do something even stronger than just grasping at your heartstrings. There's no way the clones are going to show up, and they ain't going to save by freaking love tears. It doesn't happen. I'm clefairly certain you forgot how good the first movie is. Mewtwo is this self-aware abomination who is hell-bent on making humans suffer the way he has, only to come to the realization later that thanks to the sacrifice of one young trainer, there's more good in this world than there is bad. Wow. And I find it rather oddish that you would rather watch an hour and a half of Mewtwo moping around like a freaking, like, I don't know, teenager who's mopey. 2000 got it right. Now, don't get me wrong. As a kid, the first movie was amazing. But now that I've matured into a 30-year-old adult with an ability to grow a mustache, I see the truth. Pokemon 2000 is just better. 
the second film is a snore lacks to get through and the action doesn't come into play until that final act. Meanwhile, my movie has a fantastic open where we see Ash kicking ass and taking names in a fun little battle montage. Then there's the big throwdown between the clones and the originals with a final boss battle raging between Mew and Mewtwo. Wow. I can't oversell this enough. Except the Pokemon fights were nowhere near as epic. The choreography consists of gently rocking back and forth, doing nothing, and then shoving each other half the time. Also, if you want to talk about a drowsy experience, half the first movie is just Mewtwo rambling on and on and on and on and on and on eternity with his stupid monologues. Sure, it takes a while to get started, but once it starts, it's incredible. And Lugia's monologues are nowhere near as insepid and ongoing. The only compliment I can give your movie is Jessie's still fine as hell. I know she's a cartoon, but I mean, there's something about her, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm partially Ash's mom myself, but I catch what you're laying down. <laughs> Team Rocket's not the only thing blasting off again, right? What? What? <laughs> Game over in this category. The cartoon series theme song is back in remix fashion. Remix! It is awesome. There's also a string of pop music, which I just num 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 eat up. M2Ms Don't Say You Love Me, Christina Aguilera's We're a Miracle, and even the Queen Bee herself, Britney, busts out a jam called Soda Pop. In Sync, 98 Degrees, Aaron Carter, Vitamin C, the list goes on. This is a celebration of terrible late 90s pop music at its finest. It's a shame the follow-up film had such a ghastly soundtrack. I'll give it up to you on this one, but there's one thing I must note. The Pokemon 2000 soundtrack has a little hidden gem by the name of, follow with me guys, Polkamon by Weird Al freaking Yankovic. We've been coughing up a lot of hate for each other, but these are both fun little flicks. Thanks for coming on the program, Chris. I call it a program because I'm 80 years old. Now do yourself a favor and plug your channel. Then make like an electrode and kill yourself. That's gonna mean, Adam. But any hoot hoot. At different points in my life, I've learned to appreciate both of these films for very different reasons. They are hard to compare because they're so different. One has mature storytelling, incredible action, and the other pulls at your heartstrings the entire time. You see, Pokemon for me is more than just a video game. Pokemon for me is more than just a movie, more than just a TV show. It helps shape me into the person that I am. So when I watch these films, I can't just look at them as films. They're like time capsules to me. They mean something. And each one is just very, very different for different points in my life. The first movie, again, gives you that nostalgic feeling that I can't ever let go. The second movie, however, showed me that Pokemon can be more than just fan service. If you guys want to understand where I'm coming from, you can find me on my channel, at csandreas or youtube.com slash csandreas or nerdyvideos.com if you want to type it into the search box or to type in Chris Sanders if you're feeling lazy. Uh, but you guys will understand where I'm coming from because I try my best to relate to everybody on my channel and reach out to people in ways I don't think they really even truly understand. But try me anyway. Pokemon feud done. Want to see some more animated battles? Maybe something Avatar The Last Airbender related? Head over to patreon.com slash feudnation, show your support and make a request. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Hey kids, who's that Jerkamon? It's Adam! Spot on.